Let's talk about Olight, specifically how I think the Warrior 3S is the best EDC on the market right now. This is gonna get spicy. Olight can be a heated topic around flashlight enthusiasts. And before I go any further, I should say this video is aimed at flashlight enthusiasts. You know, BLFers, CPFers, our flashlight Redditors, and anyone who's ever been excited to see that Matt Smith just released a new video. This video also assumes that you've swapped a few emitters before, or perhaps built a flashlight from scratch, like the Convoy S2 Plus. And if you haven't done any of those things, click the link on the screen now to see a step-by-step -step guide on building a Convoy S2 Plus. It's so easy, so accessible, that in the video I just linked, I have my eight-year-old son build his own custom S2 Plus flashlight. So enthusiasts love to hate Olight. I've heard the analogy that Olight is the Apple computer of flashlights. Olight, like Apple, has really cool box designs. So cool, in fact, that people will often post pictures of their light boxes. Like, just the boxes. It's such a common occurrence that our flashlight has a specific forum rule against posting an Olight box. But back to this Olight is Apple computer analogy, I don't know if it really works. True, Apple is praised for being stylish and modern, and Olight is certainly that with their designs. But Apple is also chided for being proprietary and impossible to upgrade, and that's where I think this analogy fails. Unlike some manufacturers, Olight does not glue their flashlights. Doing an emitter swap is easy on a flashlight like the Olight Warrior 3S because everything simply unscrews. So why is it that enthusiasts often dismiss Olight? I would say it's because Olight primarily uses cool white emitters in their lights and enthusiasts, by and large, prefer neutral white or warm white emitters. And if you're really into flashlights, like really into flashlights, you know you won't settle for anything but the perfect emitter in your flashlight. So if I want a warm white emitter and Olight ships flashlights with 7000K CCT cool emitters, that's a problem, right? I say no, and here I come to the crux of my pro Olight argument. Take any of the lights I own from mass production to high-end customs, none of them came with the perfect emitter. Some are the wrong CCT, some are the wrong tint, some are dimmer or less efficient than modern offerings like the Nietzsche 509A, and with all the permutations available of CCT, tint, and CRI, it's impossible for any manufacturer to offer exactly what every customer wants, unless they are built to order, like Hank Wang does for his MSR and Noctagon flashlights. And even then, I've gotten a couple lights from Hank that weren't perfect. So I'm here to make the claim that you shouldn't give a care in the world what emitter your flashlight comes with, as long as it's easy to open up and you can replace it with exactly what you want. So, I said earlier that the Warrior 3S is the best EDC on the market right now. Well, let's take a look at what makes the perfect EDC flashlight. First off, we want high output, and the Warrior 3S is over 2000 lumens. Next, we want long run time, with a fully regulated boost driver, 5000 milliamp hour 21700, there is simply nothing better for EDC. Next, you want the right size. By the right size, I mean big enough for that long run time, but not so big that you can't pocket it. You want a capable UI, something with moonlight, access to turbo, voltage readings, and electronic lockout, but you don't want it so confusing that you have to really think about how the UI works. And that's where I start souring on UIs like Enduro. You want a beautiful beam profile, and lastly, you want good color and tint. I would argue that the Worry 3S has every single one of these things, except for the good color and tint, and that's where I agree with enthusiasts. However, if you believe what I said, that no flashlight comes with the exact right emitter for you, then it's not an issue. Just open it up and swap it, and that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how easy it is to open this guy up, swap it out, and get exactly what you want. First off, big shout out to Olight because 
I had already swapped my own personal Olight, which I reviewed earlier. So if you want to see a full review about the Warrior 3S, click the link above. But I asked them to send me a new one so that I could redo it on video. And I told them why. I said, I want to show enthusiasts that they can put in exactly what they want. And uh, Olight said, sure. All right, go for it. And they uh, asked me if I wanted this new color. And I said, yeah, let's do it. Let's show this new color to everyone. So here is the brand new box. Pull the Olight out. Let's see here. Here's the Warrior 3S. It's the new green that they have. Let's push this all out of the way. And that green looks really awesome. I was a little bit skeptical. I don't like olive drab green usually, but this looks nice. It's deep and rich. Yeah, this looks amazing. I actually, I'm glad I went with this instead of the black. All right, so first step is we gotta get the bezel off. Now, the bezel's not hard to remove if you have strap wrenches. These two strap wrenches I got off Amazon. They were in a kit, Craftsman, comes with a big and a small. And I'm gonna put the big one on the body. Let's see here, let me think this out. Okay, so I need the bezel to turn the normal way you'd think, which is uh, counterclockwise, so it's gonna go this way. So that means this one goes this way. So let me go ahead and cinch that. Get right over the button here. Cinch and cinch. Pull hard. Hold it. All right. Now take the other one. Get it right on the edge. Take the little one. Get it right on the edge like that. I, you know, I, I'm going to have the bezel about, you know, halfway through the thickness of the strap. And I'm going to pull that really hard as well. And I'll pull that really hard. Hold it. Okay. Now this whole assembly is a little squishy at first. Okay, so it's gonna it's gonna slip against the body, but hopefully I get enough bite on that narrow bezel. There we go. I see it turning. Do you see it? I can see the crenulations turning slowly. Okay, so let's take this off and see. Sure enough. There you go, it's finger tight. So now we're gonna go over to my soldering station. Okay, before I pull all the guts out and start soldering, let's take a look at the original color temperature, tint, all that. And let's take a measurement. We're getting about 6,000 K at medium ramp and about 100 points over Delta UV. Let me go to turbo. And now it's almost uh, 7,000 K. And uh, pretty neutral, but I mean, 7,000 K is very cool. And obviously it is a low CRI emitter. This is just for output. This guy I measured out on my lumen tube. It was about 2,600 lumens. Okay, so we'll undo that bezel that we broke free with the strap ranges. Put that there, and then we just kind of tap this out. There we go. So what came out just then was two kind of uh, washers and the optic, the TIR optic. Now what's still in there is kind of a, a white reflector. I don't know if it's a reflector, but because it's not very reflective. But there we go. So one more tap got it out. And now we're down to the MC PCB. Get a little better light on it. MCPCB, and I mean, we're ready to unsolder this thing, pull it out. Now, I just want to point out the order on this in case you've never done this. Now, don't touch the optic too much. You're going to get fingerprints all over it. But there is a clear... Here, let me separate these. I wouldn't normally... Sometimes I just leave them together. But there's a clear plastic O-ring, kind of a rubbery O-ring, then the optic... Then the white, I guess, diffuser, I'm going to say, a white reflector, I don't know. And uh, the bezel obviously goes on the outside. So that's the order inward. So I'm going to take my trusty soldering iron here. I'm going to remove this, and then we're going to flow it. So first, you're going to unsolder the leads from the driver that run to the MCPCB. And I would load your iron with a little bit of solder first, use a little flux, I used 405 degrees Celsius. Then you're going to pull the MCPCB out. There's nothing really holding it in, but just a little thermal paste. It's not even glue, it's just paste. Then clean it off, throw it on your hot plate. My hot plate was set to 225 degrees C. Then I was able to easily remove the old emitter. The new emitter I used was an XHP50 from Mauser. It was a 5000K 80 CRI. I find the 80 CRIs are nice and neutral when you get them in there. The 90s right now don't look so good. I really don't like them. 
So here I'm adding a little SMD solder and flux in a syringe. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the emitter on. And you'll notice that the emitter is going to kind of float and kind of magnetically align on its own. Now, sometimes it just goes and it's perfect. But in this case, I had to give it a little nudge. There we go. And now it's perfect. And now I'm going to use some toothpicks to kind of tap it lightly. And you see it kind of oozes out the sides, the extra solder that I have. And I'm going to use an extra toothpick to kind of rotate it and then help flick away those extra beads. Uh, it's just something I do to get the emitter a little closer. Make sure that you do this very lightly though, because that dome is soft. Here I am prepping the leads. I just kind of removed the old solder with some wick. Now I'm applying some new solder of my own. And lastly, we're going to throw this back in to the light and then reattach the leads, obviously red to positive and black to negative. But you can see this is a very, very easy job. It took maybe 10 minutes. And once that's done, then I'm going to throw the parts back in the light in the reverse order. So it's that white reflector first, make sure that long black post goes down the hole where the optical sensor is then put the TIR in, and then you put the little rubber O-ring on top of that TIR, then the little hard plastic clear ring on top of that, and then lastly, you grab that steel bezel and you turn it clockwise. Now, you can do it finger tight if you like, or you can grab those strap wrenches and crank it. Oh, check that out. 4500K and neutral. 0006, that's a, as close as you can get. Uh, anywhere between 10 under and 10 over is dead neutral. And then if we click on here, you can see that the CRI has gone up a lot. It's now 94 CRI with an R9 of 76. A reminder that the stock emitter was 2,600 lumens. If you take a look at the charging cable, it's still red. I'm not even fully charged on the battery yet, but let's see what we got here. And whatever's on the display of my meter is going to be times 10. And we're looking at 2,300 lumens. That's a 12% loss for high CRI and perfect tint. That's what I call a win. Now this light is utterly gorgeous. 4,500K, perfectly neutral. Wow. If you saw my Worry 3S review, you know that I really like this light. But now with this enthusiast grade emitter there's just nothing to dislike about it it is the perfect edc at the end of the video here let me quickly address two common complaints i hear about olight the first is that they use a proprietary cell and the second is that users wish they would use usb-c instead of the magnetic charging system that they have now about the cell the cell is about 20 dollars from olight and it seems steep but first of all it comes with the light I don't intend to ever buy another one. I mean, if you're worried about longevity and that this light's going to last you 20 years, I would argue for an EDC, I'm going to lose it, break it, or it'll be replaced by something better way before that time. Another thing about the cell itself is it's a really good cell, high quality, and it's got a protection circuit built in for overcharging and discharging, so it's just inherently a safer cell than some of the dumb cells that you might get on the market. Now, it also, as I said supports the wireless charging. And wireless charging is amazing, guys. If you think that you want USB-C and wireless charging is a step back, think again. It's one of the reasons I bought the iPhone I have. I have wireless charging built in this table. I'll just set the phone right here and it starts charging. It's like the best thing. I don't have to fumble with a cable and get it into a little port. And on this light itself specifically, think about this. It's an EDC light. So have your cable at your bedside. When you slip into bed, you don't want to wake your significant other. Don't turn on a light, fumble with a flappy doodle, and try and insert a small USB-C into a little port. Just grab the light and in the dark, push it towards the puck, and that's what happens. I mean, seriously, I cannot think of a better system. I'm not messing with a flappy doodle. It's completely watertight. And it's no fumble in the dark. People that complain about the magnetic charging, in my opinion, have just simply never used it. It's really awesome. I hope you enjoyed that video. It was a pleasure making it for you. 
Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, comment. All that stuff helps out the channel greatly. And then I'll see you in the next review.